Hey guys, what is up? John, Sia, and Foxtrot here from fly8mikealpha.com. Today we will be showing you how to register on IACRA to get an FTN number and also register to take your written exam with the FAA. Something new that changed here in January 2020, the FAA now requires everyone to have an FTN number prior to taking a written exam. Good news for Sia is that she's already a commercial pilot, and because she's already a commercial pilot with over 500 hours in the airplane, she already has her FTN number. If you hold any sort of a pilot certificate, a student pilot certificate, a prior pilot certificate, anything, you already have an FTN number. If you've already registered on IACRA, you have an FTN number and can skip this first step we'll be showing you. But if you are a new pilot or you're a student pilot, you don't have your student pilot certificate yet and you want to go ahead and take your FAA written exam, we will show you how to go ahead and get that FTN number and also go on the PSI website and register for your FAA written exam. All right, so first thing we want to do here is go to Google and then IACRA, I-A-C-R-A. -A. We'll hit enter. First thing that comes up, iacra.fa.gov. We click on that guy and you can see, well, yeah, I've already registered, of course. I've got a username. I've got some password I don't remember. But for you guys, if you have not done this process yet, if you don't have a username or password, then you won't have an FTN. And that's where we go to register. Once we click on register, you'll go ahead and select applicant. That's what you are. You'll scroll on down. You won't select any of this other stuff. We'll click agree to terms of service and continue. You don't have an airman certificate number at this point, so we'll leave that blank. If you already do have an airman certificate number, well then you probably already have an FTN number as well and shouldn't be doing this step. But we'll go ahead and skip that and also skip the date of issuance and come right down here to first name. Now like we said, C already has her pilot's license, so we're going to go ahead and get Foxtrot her pilot certificate. She doesn't have a middle name, so we'll go ahead and check no middle name and the last name, of course, same last name as myself. Now, the important thing here is that the first name, middle name, and last name match exactly as it does on your government issued ID, pretty much your driver's license, okay? So this needs to match what's on your driver's license. We'll go ahead and look here and, oh, she's the first we can put there, sure. Her date of birth, oh, we'll just make her uh, an older Leo to make it uh, a little bit more realistic here. So maybe 8, uh, 10 of 1990 or 1991 there. We'll go ahead and select female. This asks to confirm, yes, Foxtrot was born on August 10th, 1991. She was really born actually in uh, 2019. And we'll hit OK there. We'll hit female, email address. Coincidentally enough, she shares an email address with me here at flightmikealf.com. We'll fill out some security questions and then choose a username and password. Okay, so the username, pretty easy. Mine is just, you know, John Cott. The password, however, gets a little bit more complicated, all right? The password they're looking for has to be between 12 and 50 characters and use all sorts of different weird numbers and symbols. And yeah, that's like an example password right there, okay? So they don't make this one easy. Definitely want to write this down. Definitely write down your username and password once you select it and once you actually choose one that works. I'm pretty sure that's something like the best, mostest uppercase password one, two, three, exclamation point. Oh yeah, that's actually acceptable. So maybe we'll go ahead and use that for our password. We'll create our account here. All right, so now we are registered. Foxtrot the pup is the username. And uh, so we will want to go ahead and write that down. Foxtrot the pup and the FTN C1322986. Want to keep track of that. And now we're going to head over to the PSI website to go ahead and sign up for the exam. So on back to Google here, we'll just type in PSI FAA and what we're going to get is fa.psiexams.com. We'll go ahead and click on that guy. And we want to go ahead and sign up here. So we want to create an account. So we've already got the FA tracking number, the FTN, but presumably you don't have a PSI account signed up already. So we'll go ahead and create an account. Before you can create the account, you gotta go ahead and put that FTN number in there. And we'll go ahead and put in our first and last name. Of course, as it appears on our driver's license and or dog collar. Now this is just a fancy little acknowledgement from the federal government, so we'll go ahead and agree to that, otherwise we can't move on. And then we'll go ahead and put in that email address. We have to create another username and another password for PSI, so I'll try to just keep things simple here and make it all the same. This password is even more of a nightmare than the last password, so don't fret too much. It is a little bit of a pain in the butt to come up with it, uh, but we'll go ahead and see if we can actually make these things match. Well, thank God they actually matched. And then of course, we'll write that down somewhere that we won't forget it. We'll hit continue. 
Thank God for Google, we can save our passwords. And we can see here they want us to verify our email. We could check our email and go ahead and verify it, or we could just go ahead and skip this step for now. Now again, date of birth as it appears on your driver's license and or dog collar, and then your address and all of your other personal information in here. What's your citizenship? Make sure you have all that stuff in there. And are you an active US military member or retired? We'll go ahead and put no, Foxtrot's never been in the military. Once all this is filled out, we'll go ahead and register. And now comes the part where you want to choose the exam, all right? So are you going to be doing something like private pilot airplane most likely? Well, you can just type in private pilot airplane and it'll come up, PAR is the actual code you're looking for. This is for recreational and private pilot. So let's say Foxtrot needs to go take her private pilot airplane written exam. We'll go ahead and select that as the correct test. PAR is what you're going to be selecting if you're going to be a private pilot. We'll select that. And now they give us this whole thing saying, hey, make sure you pick the right one. If there's any doubt in your mind, go ahead and reach out to a CFI or call PSI directly and say, what test am I supposed to be taking? Private pilot airplane PAR is the correct one for private pilots. But if you're doing instrument or commercial or FOI or anything else, make sure you're selecting the right one because once you pay for it, they're not gonna give you your money back. We say, yes, we understand that. And I get it, there's no refunds. We'll go ahead and acknowledge all this. Now, how many times have we tried to take this test before? Well, this is our first time taking it. So first attempt, we'll put one. If you had taken it and failed it, well, that'd be too bad. If you had used flightmikealpha.com online ground school, you definitely wouldn't have failed it because no one ever fails their written exam when they use our ground school to prepare. But if you had, then you'd have to put what attempt number it is. Since this is the first attempt for Foxtrot, we'll put number one in there. And then, ooh, this is a curious one. Uh, excuse me, I have a question. Uh, yes, Foxtrot, what is your question? Uh, what is this whole business about a school name or a FISDO ID and all that? And what if my school is not listed in these school names here? When I type it in, it doesn't show up. Well, not a problem at all. Not all the schools are listed in there. What we're going to do is simply just check the field experience box. And as long as you have that endorsement from an instructor or from a ground school of some sort to go take the FA written exam, you're all good to go. So as we come down here and says, choose either graduation completion date in school or field experience for your method of endorsement for the exam. So we go here and we start typing in school names and we find out that Oh, you know, our school is not in here. Not a big deal at all. We'll just ignore all that. We're going to simply select field experience. As long as you have an endorsement from an instructor or from a ground school and you have that printed out or you have that in your logbook somewhere to go take that to the testing center, that's what you'll do. You'll just select field experience here and then take your endorsement to the testing center the day of your exam. Now down here, they say select your authorization category. So how are you authorized to take this exam? Well, most likely it's going to be an endorsement in your logbook or an endorsement you printed out from a ground school. And so we'll go ahead and select other statement of endorsement of eligibility. And then we'll go ahead and continue here. The signed score report would be for if you had failed the exam the first time and your instructor had signed off your uh, failed score report or a certificate of graduation or certificate of completion from some other place or whatever. But in most cases, it's going to be an endorsement from an instructor or something in your logbook. So we'll go ahead and select that guy and then press continue. Here they're asking if you have anything a little bit different about you, like, are you left-handed? Hmm, that's weird. Or do you need a time extension, anything like that? And then provide a reason, do not provide medical information, no accommodation needed. Our little puppy is good to go just like she is. Don't need an accommodation, we'll click no and keep moving right along here. Now the next step is you can go ahead and read through this to see what's allowed and what's not allowed. We'll say, yes, I understand, agree. We're going to go ahead and find a testing center near us. So we're up here in Anchorage, 99501 is the zip code. How many testing centers do we have within 50 miles of us? We'll wanna go ahead and test between these dates, February 10th and February 15th. And we'll go ahead and we can hit search or it automatically searches that. We can see here's our available testing centers and here's some available times we could go there. Let's go ahead and say we want to test over at Land and Sea uh, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Friday the 14th, Valentine's Day. So once we select that time block, it gets a little dark there, gray for us. We go ahead and press schedule and they say, you're about to schedule the following appointment. Are you sure about this? And we were like, yeah, no, totally. That's what I want to do. We press schedule. We can see the total fee is going to be about 160 bucks is what it's going to come out to when it's all said and done. 96 bucks for the exam and a $64 fee, convenience fee. Presumably that's going to be going to the testing center. And total 160, we'll go ahead and put some credit card information here. And that's all we have to do. We are all set for our FA written exam. We're ready to go sit for that exam now. We have a scheduled date. Everything is done paperwork wise. Make sure you bring that endorsement in your logbook or a printed out endorsement from a ground school to the testing center the day of your exam. Foxtrot's all ready to go for her exam. She's gonna be a pilot just like Sia. Aren't you excited about that? Yeah, Sia's excited. Foxtrot's still on the fence about it. She's a little scared of flying still. Either way, guys, if you have any questions on this, go ahead and leave it in the comments right below. And as always, if you cannot fly every day, then fly eatmycalpha.com. We'll see you all in the next one.